Hello, everyone. I've just spent some time getting familiar with the uh, Revelator presets, so I thought I'd share what I've learned and hope that it helps someone else out. As you can see here, I'm on a Windows computer and I'm using uh, Universal Control version 4.1.0. Uh, that's the most recent release just built in April of 2023. So let me fire this up. I'll move that out of the way. So by default, I have not customized any of the audio. I'm using the default broadcast mail preset. So I hope the audio comes out okay. Um, there will be some times when I flip through these things and I will stop talking as I do that so that my voice, the audio doesn't change. So I do wanna give you an overview of presets. That's the only thing I'm focusing on here. I'm certainly not an audio expert. I just had a little bit of trouble getting used to this interface. So again, I thought I'd share what I've learned and hope it helps somebody out there. Now, by default, you get the broadcast mail, email, robot, and AM radio when, when the UI first comes up. And you change whichever preset you want to use by either clicking from this drop-down list here, where you can see the eight built-ins, as well as slots for eight user-defined presets. The other way you can use this preset selector knob, you just click it and drag it, and I will stop talking while I do that. And you can see that as I did that, it changed the preset that's assigned to this blue button. And that's exactly how you change these. You simply click on a button, and then choose the preset that you want assigned to that. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go through and just assign these all to broadcast mail because we'll be using that in just a minute. Okay, so I've got all four presets set to broadcast mail. And if I wanted to disable presets altogether, I could either just toggle the button that's currently active. So right now it's the blue one. So if I just click on that, presets would be disabled while they're off. And I could also just click the power button here, this yellow icon on the right. Now, the thing to know is when you choose one of these presets, the color of the preset button on the microphone is going to change to match that. So when I click orange, the button just changed to orange on my mic. And sorry, I don't have an external camera hooked up, so I can't show you the mic, but trust me, it's now orange. Now it's green. Now it's red. And we're back to blue. And the other thing you can do to turn off presets is simply hold the preset button on the mic for a few seconds, and it will turn red, indicating that presets are disabled. So I'll do that here. Okay, so I just turn them off and turn them on by pressing the preset button on the microphone. So the next thing I wanted to show you was, um, how do you save a preset? Now I wanna do this right away because I wanna play around with these presets. So I'm gonna click on, broad, click on broadcast mail. Now I'm gonna go to this little down arrow which says uh, save to user presets. So I'm going to click on that. Now this shows us the device presets list. So there are two things to know here. Uh, the first eight are in-memory presets. And if you want to store these permanently, then what you'll do is you'll export them, and then they will show up as local presets. So let's go through and do that right now. Let's first assign it to one of these device preset slots. So I want to call this test one. And I'm going to click slot one, and I'm going to click store. Okay, so this is one of the confusing things that got me is it just set that, but when it brought me back here, it didn't activate test one. Okay, so that's the first thing that it took me a minute to understand. So when you're setting these, it did set it in this device preset slot, but to activate it, you have to activate it just like you would any other preset. So if we were to do that, let's go back and show you how to do that. So let's say I wanted to make test one in slot two. So I click on slot two. Now I click the drop down, 
and I select test one. And now you'll see that that is active as the orange preset. All right, so now let's say we wanna save that permanently. Let's uh, go back to our device presets list. Let's select the item we wanna save and let's click the right arrow here, which is uh, exporting the internal in-memory settings to a file on our computer. So there you go. So we've just created a file. It's on disk. Let me bring up the Windows Explorer to show you where that is. So for me, it's under Documents, Presonus, Revelator, Mic, FAT, and then there's test1.channel. And if you were to look at that, let me bring that over. So here are the settings for that preset. All right, so I think that basically covers everything. Um, importing it is just the opposite. The couple of things about importing that you need to know is that importing brings it to the next empty slot, okay? And you can import the same one multiple times. In fact, let's just do that. So it doesn't matter what you have selected here. When you uh, choose the preset to import and then click the left arrow, it automatically populates the next empty slot. So if we just keep doing that, we can fill up our eight slots. And then when, if we try it again, we'll get the message, no empty preset slot is available. So then you could just come over here and you could just clear a preset, whichever one you wanted, just say delete. You want to delete that? Yes. And note that this delete only deletes the in-memory preset. So then we could come over here and say, go ahead and load that one. Now, if you're on the local preset side and you want to delete one of the files from disk, you right click here and just say delete. Delete this file permanently, yes. And you'll notice the file is gone from disk. So I think that covers everything. Again, the biggest things for me to get my head around was that when you manage the device presets list, it does not change or activate which preset you're listening to. So that's everything. I hope this helps someone and uh, we'll see you later.